Asante came to TurboTax after graduating from culinary school and landing a job in the hottest kitchen in town. My hands are full all day, every day. I love it. Asante, as your TurboTax expert, I'll make your moves count, guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and your maximum refund. Sound good? Yes, expert! Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. Wow, this is a big one. Lenovo released major security updates for more than 100 different laptop models. They say it's to fix critical vulnerabilities that make it possible for hackers to secretly install malicious firmware tracking software that can be next to impossible to remove or to even know that it's even there. Now, three vulnerabilities are affecting more than one million laptops. So, hey, if you have a Lenovo laptop, make sure that you get that update immediately. Like, do it right now. And if you're Hunter Biden, well, you probably need a new laptop. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, to Yes, it's Kim Commando today, because after all, I'm America's digital goddess, Kim Commando, here with you once again. And how about we get this party started with five Five things that you need to know about tech. It's happening right now. And we're going to start with Netflix. Wow. You know, until now, Netflix, they could do no wrong. Every quarter, I mean, they'd come out, they would have more viewers, they would have more shows. And of course, they were making more money. Well, earlier this week, those of us who've been warning, you know, that Americans were all at this breaking point with the number of different streaming services, and the different shows and the different things that you can watch. Um, we were all proven correct because Netflix stock suddenly tanked. For the first time ever, Netflix suffered a major drop in subscribers, 200,000 to be exact. And the next quarter, they said, is going to be even worse. So Wall Street started panicking. Netflix stock dropped about 37 percent. And then everybody came out and said, well, you know, we know the reason why. It's increased competition. And then, wow, subscribers are sharing their passwords. Do you remember when Netflix told us all to share passwords? Yes, it's okay. Go ahead and do that. But it's only half rights. And you can forget about the password sharing. The equation is really super simple. There are just too many streaming channels. And then they're fragmenting the marketplace and the best programs. Then, of course, what's happening outside, right? We have inflation. Gas prices are eating us alive. And now we're all trying to make these hard choices. And history repeats itself. I mean, this is cable cutting part two. And there's going to be more. Oh, but back to the password sharing. Netflix says that they're going to stop that. And they can actually track it by the IP address to the subscriber who pays. But after 10 years of owning the streaming marketplace and growing subscribers, you know what they're going to do. Are you ready for this? They're going to offer an advertising-supported membership. Okay, yes, commercials interrupting your shows, which sounds really familiar, doesn't it? I mean, that model just works. Uh, how about number two? We're going to move on to Elon Musk. I mean, watching as the world's richest person attempts this hostile takeover of the world's most influential social network. It is kind of like a Netflix docudrama, isn't it? I mean, there's poison pills, of board of directors, and they really have no skin in the game, by the way. I don't know if you know this, but Twitter's board of directors is supposed to be the shareholder's watchdog. Okay, It pays itself almost $3 million a year, but the board of directors owns almost no stock. On the other hand, Elon Musk owns more company stock than all the board members combined. I mean, maybe the board doesn't believe in Twitter enough to buy any shares of it. Now, Musk says if he buys Twitter, he's going to scrape this board. So the board is about to issue millions of additional stock shares. That's where the so-called poison pill comes into play. And it's all designed to reduce Musk, Elon Musk's percentage of ownership and to reduce the stock's price. So it's hard to say what's going to be happening next. But what's interesting to me is that Elon Musk was talking about his fortune, $275 billion, in an interview with the head of TED, the guy by the name of Chris Anderson. Anyway, he says that he tries to work as much as possible to the edge of sanity. He said he's been able to increase the value of Tesla by $100 million in 30 minutes in a meeting. 
<laughs> wow, I would like that. He says he doesn't own a home right now. He's literally staying at friends' places in their spare bedrooms. Uh, he does own a plane, he says, because after all, he does own a plane because after all, he says, he just has a lot of work to do. Um, but what's interesting to me about all of this is that when you ask if his companies have a significant philanthropic value, remember $275 billion, Elon Musk says, if you say that philanthropic, if you say philanthropic is a love of humanity, well, then we are. We're accelerating sustainable energy. We love that. And SpaceX is trying to ensure the long-term survival of humanity. So that's how he's philanthropic. Uh, number three, Gen Zs. They are getting offline. What? Yes. Are the days of FOMO over? Generation Z, who grew up glued to their smartphones and social media, they're now leading the newest trend of going, dare I say, IRL. Yes, offline and in real life. New research is out that Gen Zers' love of Instagram is down. And to them, both Facebook and Twitter, it's dead. And the very platform that was supposed to bring these Zoomers, the Gen Zers, together is making them feel anxious and depressed. Some 56% of Gen Zers say this, and I quote, social media has led them to feel left out by their peers. So they're removing their social media accounts for months at a time. But what's surging in popularity is a new social platform called Be Real. You can only post unedited, non-filtered photos throughout the day. There are no likes. I wonder if we're gonna see the Kardashians there. Mm, that's not gonna happen. Do you remember, wow. Last year, when the Kardashians like totally freaked out over an unedited picture of Chloe in a bikini, yeah, they tried to get that off the internet. It doesn't happen. Uh, number four, let's talk about those e-scooters, the secrets that no one wants you to know. Those fleets of e-scooters that you've seen pop up in cities and towns across the country are actually known as shared mobility devices, just in case you want to know that. You insert your credit card to right away, but here's the truth. With spring here and summer vacations on the way, more people than ever are giving into the temptation to ride an e-scooter. But you need to know a few things. First, you are taking all the legal risks. If you get hit or take a fall, if you're injured and need of medical care, it's going to be on you. Now, about a third of falls and spills result in a fracture, usually the forearm or a collarbone. It's bad. Dislocation, Facial trauma, also common. Half of all serious injuries arrive in an emergency room. Well, listen to the hours between midnight and 6 a.m. And of course, you know, a third of everybody was drinking then. So just remember, just because you're on vacation doesn't mean you're invincible. And finally, number five. Oh, this is sad to me. Everyone knows that as Americans, to one degree or another, we are addicted to our smartphones. But how addicted are we? Well, the pull of our smartphone is so great that it's not really an addiction. That's what the experts say. It's actually an obsession. So aside from carrying our smartphones everywhere we go, um, almost 100% use them while watching TV, raising my hand. 72% uh, use them while walking the dog. That would be me. A staggering one-third use them while riding a bicycle. Uh, yeah, that would be me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, they say half get injured because of the distraction. Luckily, not me. And now 90% uh, use their smartphone sitting on the toilet. That's right. A uh, quarter use their phones during family dinners. And my favorite, okay, this is not me, 10% uh, admit that the very first thing they do after they make love is, um, yeah, they check their smartphone. How very special their partner must feel. All right, coming up in just a few moments, you've seen all those smart plugs, I'm sure, and you've always wondered, like, I'm, what exactly are they good for? Well, I've got some innovative ways that you can use smart plugs, and if you're a photographer, wow, I'm also going to be talking about some lenses for your smartphone camera. Yeah, we've got that, and we have all of your phone calls here on the Kim Commando Show. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. 
These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving U.S. state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more. All right, how about we start this hour with Glenn? Hello there, Glenn. Glad to have you with us today. Hi, Kim. Welcome. Great to talk to you. So how do you pronounce your town? I'm in Kiwaki. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And where's Kiwaki? Kiwaki is about 15 miles uh, west of Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Well, that would make sense. Okay. That's our geography <laughs> lesson for the day here on the Kim Commando <laughs> Show. Okay. <laughs> so how can I help you? Um, well, I've, uh, I'm thinking Apple seems to be tracking me like Big Brother. So I've got, um, I've been getting some pop-ups on my phone. I've got an Apple XR. And this past Saturday, it popped up. It said, it's 23 minutes to get to, your, to my son's house. And I was sitting at my laptop here in my, my home office working on a report for church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it, it is kind of tracking me because the past three weeks I was at his home cutting his grass. He's out of town for about a month. And uh, I went on, on Saturdays at 9 o'clock all those three weeks. And then I went on Friday. So here I'm sitting at my computer the other day on Saturday, and it pops up at 9 o'clock. It's 23 <laughs> minutes to my son's home. You better so, get going right now because you're going to be late. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So I'd like to stop them from tracking me like that. Yeah, you know, it is eerie, isn't it? It's, yeah. Um, it was, my, mother, my mother has been ill, and she was at the Mayo Clinic for several weeks. And so I got into my truck here at the studios and my Apple CarPlay popped up on the screen in the truck and it said, oh, it's going to take 27 minutes for you to get home. OK, well, they home with he thought or the computer thought Apple thought my home was at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> like, no, she's not there right now. She's out. Thank you. OK, <laughs> Um e e it's, it's called significant locations. And it's really kind of a screwball thing, Glenn, because you actually have to, and I'm really surprised because Apple's always like, oh, we are so privacy centric, right? Yeah. Um, but you actually have to go to find this. And let me just tell you where it is. And then I'm gonna tell you an easier way that you can see all these steps, okay? Okay. You go into your settings, you go into privacy, and then you click location services. And then from location services, you go to something called system services. Okay. And then after symptom, system services, Glenn, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, like down, 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 like four or five times. And when you get all the way to the end of that, you see something that says significant locations. And the significant locations is just that. So Apple thought every Saturday that you had an appointment at 9 a.m. to cut your son's grass. Not to, but just to go to your son's house or go to a house. Yeah, yeah. And so you can edit these significant locations. You can tell Apple not to track it. You could clear the history and all that happens in the menu system. Um, and so you do have the you do have a way to opt out of it. But Apple says, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, if you do that, maybe the map won't work so great. Maybe this won't work so great. And oh, she really wished you wouldn't do that because we're just trying to lend a hand. Um, if you need those steps, I actually put them up on my Instagram account. Do you follow me on Instagram? I do not have an Instagram account. Oh, well, if you did, <laughs> you could go to um, Instagram.com slash Kim Commando and you can see all the steps. I just put them up there. And for you and for everybody else, I'll put them in the Q&A forum, okay? So you can see exactly okay. what the steps are and you can opt out. But it is it is interesting that we have this data that's being collected. And when you see this map, I think, Glenn, you'll be surprised like everybody else is that it truly does track every single place where you go. I mean, it 
it's kind of a creepy thing because you can go, oh my gosh, you know, I've been here 17 times since February of 2020 or whatever it may be. And again, the steps are kind of hard, but we'll post them over at the Q&A forum. What that means, if you're a new listener, welcome, is if you go to commando.com slash community on the left-hand side of that page, there's a link that says Q&A forum. And that's where that's where I post things that I talk about here on the show. It gets to be a lot easier than going, like, got to go here, got to go there, got to go there. But speaking of social media, stop ghosting me. If you are on Instagram, go ahead and click that big old follow button because there's always a lot of cool stuff, more personal stuff that I put on the Instagram account in between of some tips every once in a while. And that's Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. Of course, it's Facebook.com slash Kim Commando, Pinterest.com slash Kim Commando, Twitter.com slash Kim Commando. You get the drift because you are so smart. So wherever you are on social media, stop ghosting me already and make sure that you share the content out too. We're always looking to build our social media following. And that really helps us out. All right, let's switch topics just right for a moment right now. And let's talk about some smart plugs. Now, if you haven't tapped into using smart plugs in your home, wow, you're missing out. There are these little marbles and they sit between a power socket and say a lamp. And they really can do so many great things. So essentially you control whatever is using a smart plug with an app on your phone. So whether you're at home or you're in another part of the world. So let's say you're going on vacation, you're out of town. You can set timers on a few lamps to come on and off so it looks like you're home. And you can change this by the way when you're on the road. You can also have each lamp come on at different schedules. And if you're coming home from vacation late at night, you can just turn them all on. Now, what about the kids' gaming console or television? Yeah, bet you never thought of this. No more fighting over it. What you can do is use a smart plug to set a schedule for when the Xbox or TV comes on and off. Yeah, nice. Now, let's say you sleep with the fan on or maybe a heated blanket. What you can do is use a smart plug and have that turn off automatically in the middle of the night so you don't have to get up to do that. So which smart plug is the best one for you? You want to buy the ones that work with what you already have. So whether it's Alexa, Google, or Siri, just work it that way. All right, stay right where you are. We have more of your phone calls and more tips coming up you don't want to miss. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving U.S. state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more. All right, coming up in just a few moments, there's a new operating system that can resurrect old laptops. So if you have an old laptop laying around and you don't know what to do with it, but it might be good for the kids or mom and dad or whoever, is that there's a new way to bring it back to life. And no, if you're a geek of the week, you're sitting there saying, I already know that, Kim, it's Linux. No, I am not talking about Linux. No, 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 no. And before we go back to your phone calls, let's talk about smartphone cameras. And I know so many of us are going to be going on that vacation, right? Because we haven't been able to go anywhere since the pandemic. Now, do you remember back in the day when you needed to carry a bulky, expensive DSLR just to take photos? Okay. Maybe you also carry a set of lenses that let you zoom in on the action or capture the entire landscape or view. Well, here's an insider secret to expand your photography horizons. And what you're going to do is start using specialty lenses for your smartphone. Yeah, you can do that. Because today's smartphone cameras, the capabilities are really amazing. The resolution, the color depth, and how easy they are to use. You just open it up and you start just tapping. And you don't really need to lug a separate camera around on vacation anymore. I mean, I remember I went to Italy and I carried a, a mirrorless camera and I sat there and I didn't even use it. I mean, I just kept using my phone. But if you're really into photography, take a look at adding a few lenses to your smartphone's camera. 
Like, for example, a wide-angle lens for your smartphone camera lets you capture about 45% more inside of a shot. And a macro lens gets you about 15 times closer. And they work really easily. You simply place the different lenses, fisheye, telescope, or more to the camera's lenses on your iPhone or Android phone. And good lenses, I know you can see them on Amazon for like 20 bucks, but don't buy those. You're not going to be happy. Good lenses cost around $100 each. And if you want to know more, you can find links. And we've got a ton of photography tips over my website. That's commando.com. All right, let's go back to the phones with Sandra. Hello there. Welcome to the show. Hi. I guess I have a two-part question. My kitty had went missing, and I think someone stole her because she was there. And then all of a sudden, she wasn't there. And I was, like, in a fenced backyard. I mean, it had chain link, and then it had a privacy fence around it. I mean, I know there's always the possibility she could have somehow gotten loose. And then when I started checking around, I had one neighbor that did tell me some kids were over messing with Mm, my gate. That ain't good. Uh, That's not good. And then the other thing was um, I had used two different – or looked at two different services for recovering my kitty. One of them – they said for like fifty dollars, they would print up a flower flyer. I give them, you know, a picture of the kitty, and they would contact all the local shelters and put it on Facebook and so forth. But then there was another one that was quite a bit more expensive, and they had a very limited time. And then all of a sudden, I started getting all these emails from. United Kingdoms for lost kitties and Ukraine for oh, lost okay. kitties. Yeah. So I was, yeah. See, I was concerned you know. Yeah. See, uh, you know, that's always the downside of any time you try to do something right. I mean, here you are, you lost mm-hmm. your cat, you want to get your cat back, and so you gave them your email address and your phone number and thinking like, okay, you know, people are going to contact mm-hmm. me if they found the cat. So what you want to do mm-hmm. is. Always remember that you can create disposable email addresses. So let's say, mm-hmm. let's say for example, do you use Gmail? Yeah. Okay. So if you're using Gmail, you have your address and whatever. Don't don't say what it is mm-hmm. on the air. So you have your address. So let's just say it's I love cats at gmail.com. So now you want to find your cat. Mm-hmm. So you can say I love cats, and then you would put a plus sign. And then you say, mm-hmm. for the flyer at gmail.com. So anything after the plus sign tells Gmail that it's going to be mm-hmm. sent to you. So you don't need to give out your primary mm-hmm. email address ever again. Because now that it's mm-hmm. out there, you're going to fully, I'm going to fully expect for you to see a lot more spam and uh, along the way. And especially if you gave him your phone number, you can also get a secondary uh, I guess you'd say like a burner phone number by using Google Voice. Mm-hmm. And then so, okay. so with Google Voice, you get another phone number, but it will actually, with the app, it'll ring on your on your phone. But you know that it's coming from Google Voice. But also, as a side mm-hmm. note, is that when your Google Voice, I love it. I have one myself that I use when I'm trying to lease out rental properties or something like that. Is that if you don't take the phone call, is that it comes to your email uh, fully transcribed, and it also has voicemail and all these other things, and it's absolutely free. So, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you lost the cat, and I hope that you get your cat back. But in the future, whenever you want to put something out on the Internet, you don't want to put your personally identifiable information. I mean, not your personal cell phone, okay? Not your email address that you've been using for 10 to 12 years because that's how it gets on scammers lists and spammers lists. So just try to keep that stuff pretty close to the vest. All right, let's talk about putting a new operating system on these old laptops. This is really great stuff. All right, so if you have an old laptop or PC laying around that's just collecting dust, get it out. You can install a new operating system and bring it back to life. I mean, planned obsolescence, it's a total problem with technology. There's always something better, faster, smaller. But there's some great news for older laptops and desktops. A new free operating system is now available from Google. It's called Chrome OS Flex. And basically, it's a version of Chrome that you can use on a laptop or a desktop computer that's not a Chromebook. And I have to tell you, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of, say, Windows or Mac. But think of it as a really snazzy web browser. It doesn't take a lot of overhead to work. As a matter of fact, the system requirements are so basic. You just need an Intel or an AMD chip with at least 4 gigs of RAM, 
16 gigs of storage space, and a USB drive. And if this sounds interesting to you, um, if you need the steps on how to get it and how to install it, you'll find everything that you need over at my website. Well, you know where that is. That's commando.com. All right, still to come, we're going to talk about your social media accounts and some ways that you can streamline your posting. And then later on, yeah, you can find out if someone was actually snooping on your PC. So stay right where you are here with Kim Commando today. Since our founding in 2000, we at the Center for Internet Security have always had one mission. It's to create confidence in the connected world for people, businesses, and governments. As a nonprofit, we do this by drawing upon our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. The world is changing, cyber threats are evolving, and IT resources are limited. All you want is a way to strengthen your cybersecurity programs efficiently and effectively. Let CIS help you with these efforts. We use a consensus-based process involving IT professionals from around the world to develop and maintain security best practices. These resources are proven to defend systems and data against threats, both on premises and in the cloud. We also strive to help organizations of every size and maturity strengthen their cybersecurity programs. This includes serving US state, local, tribal, and territorial government organizations. At CIS, we're all about making the connected world a safer place. Visit our website to learn more. If you're not already getting the Kim Commando Show newsletters, oh, you're so missing out. I really consider the breaking security alerts and the tips probably essential things that you get from us. But we offer a dozen different type of newsletters. It's Windows, Android, Smart Home. We have travel tips, business tips, you name it. So head over to commando.com slash subscribe. That's commando.com slash subscribe. And then you can just pick the newsletters that you want. And then you can also give us your preferences so we deliver more content that you want to see directly to you. Once again, that's commando.com slash subscribe. All right, before we go back to your calls, if you have more than two social media accounts, it's a total hassle updating your Twitter, your Facebook, your Pinterest, your Instagram, your LinkedIn. I know, there's a lot of them. And you don't need to copy and paste the same status update on your different social media accounts. So what you want to do is you're going to up your game. You're going to use a special tool for like Buffer, Hootsuite, or Sprout Social, because this way you can post all across your social media accounts at once. And from their dashboard, you just compose the post. You can add any photos, videos, or links that you want. Choose where it goes, say Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that's it. It's done. So a basic account is free for three social media accounts usually. A paid account normally gets you eight different social media platforms, and then you get other tools like analytics to see how effective your posts are. Uh, once again, the names, again, are Buffer, Hootsuite, or Sprout Social. All right, let's see what's going on with the phones. Hello there, Mick. Welcome to the show today. Appreciate you getting through. So how can I help you? Well, uh, I was thinking of you, oh, digital goddess, as I was <laughs> trying to find a CMR uh, system. You mean a CRM? System. I, C, uh, CRM, excuse yes, me. Yes, no problem. I, Right. So, so I picked up one called Capsule. I was recommended to use another one, but couldn't even get it to work for me. Uh, and then I came upon the Dream uh, system, which is actually agent uh, uh, management. Which okay. Is, well, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Just okay. So, what do you? What kind of business are you in? What do you need the CRM to do? I just launched my life insurance business. Oh, nice. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, it's a, yep, and, and I've got a, 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 a national insurance organization that's basically I'm working with in my home state. I'll be working with multiple agents, but I'm just okay. getting started with one. And you got to keep track of all this stuff so that you don't leave the crumbs sitting on the table yes. or miss clients and... So, so you, the idea of building a pipeline and following, it's very important. All right. So, you know, because when you start to, you I mean, you use the words like capsule. And I mean, these are truly for uh, insurance agencies with multiple agents, right? Um, now, if you're only, when I say only, okay, if you're just looking to track clients uh, and so that this way, you know, like, 
I called Kim and she said, you know, to give her a call in, you know, three weeks when she's back from vacation or, uh, you know, I need to follow up when, uh, you know, her husband retires or, you know, or whatever it is, right? Life events. Right. That, that, that is probably too much uh, when it's just too much for you to do because when you are handling all the details, you're not making sales calls, right? So what I, have, what I have found is that there's a couple of big names out there, and uh, we've tried using Salesforce. And, and I had found it pretty cumbersome myself and a little bit too expensive for my liking. Because as a small business owner, I have like this really weird formula, Mick, is that for every dollar I spend, I have to make at least $3 back. Because by the time I make taxes and everything else is that I need to make sure that there's a profit, right? So I look at every expense very closely and if there's a true return on it. So Salesforce was too expensive. And so what we track, because we sell two, okay? We mm-hmm. sell advertisers. And there could be you know, 600 potential advertisers and they have to be tracked because sometimes they're interested, sometimes they're not, people change. And you also want to be able to have the ability to email once every quarter, uh, maybe a report about the state of the life insurance industry, or here's a special that we're having and uh, we're having an event. You can get a free hot dog or steak dinner if you come by and, you know, to with a meet and greet or whatever it is. And we also keep track of about I'd say about 700 different radio stations because we also have to call the radio station and say, would you like to carry the show? Have you carried the show? Do you like the show? Things that we can do for you and, and program directors change. And so it's kind of similar in that we all have clients no matter what we are. We settled on a program called HubSpot. And I have – be Yep, HubSpot. I found it really easy to use. It keeps track of every email that you send to a client. So you can go back and look at the correspondence right there. You get the replies. Uh, you can assign tasks to dues three months, six months, a year out, whatever it may be. You can send generic uh, letters to new clients. It is almost like having a real life, honest to goodness, in the 60s and 70s when people used to have secretaries, but now it's all inside your computer. And so you may not necessarily need something like a CRM where it's just for insurance, life insurance companies, as much as it's a sales tool for you to use. Now, you might want to look at Salesforce because if it's just you, it might be cheaper because we had multiple people that wanted to use it. Uh, But um, a gentleman who works with us, he used Salesforce at his previous company, and he's actually said that he likes HubSpot a lot better. Understood. And cost is a factor, yeah. very much so. I know. You know, and if and it has to be a factor, especially when you're starting your own business. Because you've seen them, and I've seen them too, where people, they go out and go, oh, yeah, we're going to do great. And they buy, like, the most expensive office space, and they buy a car, and they buy cups with the company name on it, <laughs> only to say, like, three months later, they're out of business. So, uh, so check out Salesforce and HubSpot, and if neither one of them work out, just give me a call back, and we'll see what else we can do. Oh, hey, thanks for the uh, the guidance. You got it, Mick. Good luck to you. You're gonna kill yes, it. You, do. you are. You know, CRM stands for Customer Relationship Manager. We used to just call them contact managers. Do you remember that? And hey, you may not need something so whiz bang and fancy as say Salesforce or HubSpot. Um, Maybe all you need is Microsoft Outlook, but I'll tell you, like anything, you have to be really diligent about using the CRMs and the contact management programs because it's something that you want to be able – it's almost like a religion. you got to get in there, make the phone call, make the notes, and then make the appointment for the next contact, whatever it may be. But if you're in any type of sales, let me tell you, you really need to use something like this. The reminders and the context, it just doesn't really work. It really will fine-tune your process. Okay, so you think someone was snooping on your computer. Well, the first stop is to see what files on your PC that the person opened. Well, good for you. Windows has a really simple way to go back to a file or an attachment that you looked at before. What you're going to do is open File Explorer, of course, by pressing the Windows key and the E key at the same time. And then if you look 
to the top left menu, there's an option that says quick access. That's the list of everything that you've opened along with anyone else who has hopped on your PC. You can also open apps like Word and look at the list marked recent. Another clue, get in there and sort files modified by days in File Explorer. Of course, look at your web browser's history, and most people know how to remove that, so you may not find anything there. But you need to know a simple shortcut to make sure that no one snoops on your PC when you're not around. So just put a password on your login. And the next time you're done using your computer, press the Windows key and the L key to lock your PC automatically. Hey, thanks for joining us, and don't forget, the show never ends at komandio.com. Hey, thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening. Tax day is coming. Oh, no. But if you sign up for Robinhood Gold's IRA with a 3% match, you can get up to $195 for the 2023 tax year. Oh, yeah. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash boost by tax day to get the biggest contribution match on the market. Subscription fees apply. You know you Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC.